So as Pam mentioned, for every kind of situation that occurs, there's an opportunity. And what we're going to look at today is how do we shape our businesses around opportunities that we see? How do we distinguish between what is an idea and an opportunity? And how do we use this as an opportunity to get more focused with regards to what it is that we do next? So today you're going to learn how to assess whether an opportunity is worth pursuing, which will hopefully be a skill that will make you a lot more efficient as you run and grow your business. Uh, the four environmental forces that can affect your business. So this is just being able to apply sort of a filter to things that you see so that you can kind of more rapid fire assess what that might mean for you and your business. And then how to adapt and adopt your business model as required so you can future-proof and stay competitive. That's something that Emma mentioned. She had already been thinking about doing something digitally as a way to future-proof it. And COVID presented an opportunity to accelerate it. So a healthy business is one that is always evolving. I know change can feel kind of strange at times and especially over the next four weeks, our hope is that a lot of you go through a nice type of metamorphosis. Um, and just know that that's a good thing. Amazon started by selling books. Today, they mostly provide cloud storage, you know? And so your business will always continue to change and grow and develop as you change, grow, and develop, and as the world changes. So our bite-sized lesson for today is business model design. It's a minute 30 seconds, and this is just an explainer of how we want you to think about this next activity. There's something you should know. Yes, your products and services are essential, but on their own, they won't make your company succeed. The right business model is what makes a venture thrive. The model we used is the Lean Canvas. There it is, and there it goes. You'll see it again later. In order to see all the paths open to your business and get the most from the lead canvas, it's vitally important to thoroughly understand the environment in which your company exists. First up, macroeconomic forces. What's happening in the stock markets? What are current interest rates? What do they mean for your business? Next is key trends. What's new with technology? How will regulation changes affect you? Then there's market forces. What's happening in your segment? How much is your customer willing to pay? Finally, we have industry forces. Can competitors undercut you with a similar product? Now that you've examined your business's environment, you can complete the Lean Canvas and make informed decisions about your company's next steps. Remember, in business, knowledge is power. Now we actually won't be doing a lean canvas. Uh, you all next week will see, or in our next session on Thursday, we'll see the business model canvas, but the premise still stands. Right. So do we all understand, does anyone have any questions before we kind of breeze into what we mean by this? So macroeconomic forces. Pam, do you wanna give us some examples of what we mean and how we should think about macroeconomic forces when it comes to our businesses? Yeah. Um, so when we think about um, macroeconomic forces, macro just means overarching, uh, super large. Uh, economic forces. So think, for example, post pandemic, how uh, the market forces have changed. Where has the strong power dynamic in terms of finance, commodities, economic infrastructures, capital markets shifted? 
well, it's evident that the Far East is beginning to emerge as a real driver. So thinking about global market conditions does in fact shift the balance from the power of the European market to the power of the Far Eastern market. So those would be global market conditions that will impact on the decisions that we take in our own business, in our own context. Capital markets are around the availability of finance and what that looks like and how that will alter the decisions that we take. You'll notice, for example, how debt lending, so banks, uh, are making it very difficult uh, to get startup finance. Uh, what they're looking for instead is to turn their services into supporting uh, entrepreneurs by delivering courses, etc. But that still means that we need to think about capital markets in relation to how banks think about it, which would be to do with risk. Commodities. Okay. Other Oops, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. So commodities and other resources are, if you run a business, let's say like Gina's business, where you're reliant on bringing in textiles from Guatemala, then the commodities, that is the fibers commodity, the price of that is going to alter your pricing structure. So you need to be aware of the trends that are occurring in commodities if you use commodities as part of your product offering. And economic infrastructure, you need to think about the strength, for example, of the UK financial services infrastructure as being uh, second only to New York. Uh, in terms of the world. So we know that we have a strong economic infrastructure that we can rely on to build our businesses going forward. Brilliant. Now, foresight. Yeah, you want to talk to us about how we look at foresight and key trends? Okay. Well, I think about foresight as being future thinking. If we think about the speed of change in the forces that are outside of our business, think only about how the last 18 months has altered completely the landscape for starting a business, growing a business, or scaling a business, then we need to do some future thinking about where our business wants to be in the next three years. So we look at these key trends, socioeconomic trends would be how consumers are changing their purchasing decisions and the drivers for those decisions. So their behavior has changed as a result of the pandemic. And since consumers are our end users, irrespective of the kind of business that we've got, we need to take that into account. Think also about the societal and cultural trends. Here, think, for example, about um, Generation Z and how Generation Z behaves uh, differently to millennials. So if we are targeting as a customer segment youth or young graduates, we need to understand how they access information how long they'll spend on a digital platform and how they use what they learn. If we think about regulatory trends, think about all of the legislation that's coming into force, for example, around net zero and carbon and how that is going to affect how we design products, services uh, to meet those regulatory trends or how we support other businesses in our consultancy to be prepared for and to be able to grow within a new regulatory environment. I can't 
talk enough about the technology trends. The technology trends are massive. And Vienna has alluded already to the speed of change in technology and how it's exciting, guys. We need to understand all of the digital tools that we can use, learn to use effectively in our storytelling and in our um, production and day-to-day -day ops that enable us to reach a larger footprint of our target customer segment in a more immersive, engaging way. And then market analysis. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. In terms of <coughs> market analysis, we all agree that market forces change. The power of a market force changes. So in terms of market segments, the pandemic will have altered the behavior of customers. And that means we need to think again about which target market segment we want to we want to focus on depending on changes in their behavior and in their purchasing. We also need to think about needs and demand. Imagine, for example, how so many companies have pivoted uh, over the pandemic to producing PPP uh, and other pandemic related products when actually they may have been in an entirely different business before that. Uh, there are market issues. Uh, these would be interruptions of service. These would be changes in uh, forces. These would be unexpected events that will have a tendency to ripple through all of the market forces and create a change in each one of these elements. There are switching costs. I, who am um, locked into Apple, for example, um, I'm beginning to notice some wonderful mobiles that are coming on the market that do more than my, my, uh, my uh, iPhone. But the idea of switching for me means that I will need to leave my technology environment and adopt another technology environment. So in the mind of your customer, remember that you will be thinking about what is the switching cost that they are thinking in the back of their minds when they are looking at your product or service? Can they get out of a contract uh, for services in order to adopt yours? And revenue attractiveness, and we will look at that in greater detail, is uh, essentially about uh, how much of a layer of profit you can place on the revenue that you expect to gain. And this is all about distinctiveness, uh, creating a product or a service that is valuable, inimitable, um, cannot be replicated by anyone else. And that brings us back to having a competitive advantage with respect to others. And then our competitor analysis. Okay. In terms of industry forces, a lot of SMEs tend to think about their markets as being, uh, as being purely end users and customers. I want you to think about, we want you to think about all of the existing suppliers and value chain actors that you could be latching onto through networking <laughs> that will enable you to get to market faster, less expensively, and to reach a far wider audience. Stakeholders are important. Think, for example, about local government 
and its power to shape uh, economic um, conditions in our region and the opportunities that stem from that, such as grants, etc. Think about your competitors. Uh, you need to be able to understand how many competitors are direct competitors uh, for your services and your products. And then there are new entrants. You need only to imagine how many times each of you may have pivoted and how easy it was to turn one service into another service through digitization post pandemic or during the pandemic. If it was easy, then understand that it will also be easy for all of your competitors. So that makes the quantity of new entrants, the noise around that, something you need, an element you need to think about when you are looking at competition. And there are also other organizations uh, that produce substitute products and substitute products are easier, better, faster products and services um, where the value to the customer remains. Those are perhaps in a digital age, uh, the most dangerous uh, industry force that you need to think about and be aware of. And that's why being aware of how your sector the industry forces that are impacting on the sector that you work in is very important. Awesome. So you guys ready to go into our group activities? Do you wanna take a two minute stretch or are you good to keep cracking on? All right, let's rock and roll. So. Our first exercise, can everybody make sure you've got some post-its and pens nearby or some paper? And we're just gonna take five minutes and we're going to use a very handy sort of six box container called a pestle analysis to think through with regards to our businesses the political, the economic, the social, the technological, the legal, and the environmental forces that will be impacting our own businesses. Because once we get into the second activity, you're gonna apply that knowledge into how you can find opportunities worth pursuing. So, oops. We've all got some post-its. Here we go. So I just, just take a minute and think, what are the political forces that are impacting what it is that you do? So it could be Brexit, it could be uh, the change in the stamp duty. So when that holiday goes, will people have less money to invest in fixtures and fittings and furnishing and curtains as maybe they would before then. Um, if you're looking at uh, some other examples, so, uh, you know, government having to invest back into healthcare or education, what kinds of things in the political sphere might have an impact on your business? or might be of concern or of interest to your customer. And if you wanna shout a couple out as well to get feedback, go for it. Anna, uh, stretch, you're on mute. <laughs> I, was talking, I was talking to myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, perhaps it. I think for us, for us is probably the drive of certain international students coming into the UK. And obviously, we're focusing on market on the uh, I'm just going through the others. Just talk. 
Okay. So Kat, for you, perhaps it might be any changes to how the NHS is uh, providing support for fertility treatment, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I've written about down about the fact that people pay so much for private fertility treatment in most cases. Um, and that then impacts what financial um, disposable income they'll have afterwards as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now let's look at economic. So higher national debt, uh, the growth of local supply chains. So people are very much into the circular economy. Um, the end of the tax and mortgage holiday relief. So perhaps if you're B2B, uh, you might be wondering, well, what could the impact be? So Laura, for, I know that you've mentioned an interest in physical space. Could the end of the uh, business rates relief impact the number of property available on the market? So could that mean that perhaps you might be able to find a space as a pop-up for less than it would have cost otherwise because landlords are holding extra stock and they need people to go in it or the local councils don't want holes on the high street and so they're looking for people who want to build community uh, to come in. So perhaps pre-COVID it would have been an opportunity that was outside of your, your reach because you would have had to have business rates and this, that, and the other, but now it could be an opportunity worth pursuing. Uh, Joe, any thoughts on like the economic side for your business? Me, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is all kind of quite scary for me because um, I'm I'm absolutely not from this sort of business background. So a lot of this terminology is very new. Um, I I'm not going to protest to know anything about a lot of it. Uh, which is why I'm here to hear everybody's sort of views and and um, and learn. I'm, I need to be a bit like a sponge, really. Um, but I think the, th the biggest thing that I'm struggling with is is um, sourcing uh, materials for, for okay. my business. So um, a lot of the work I do is on bamboo, mm -hmm. um, which prior to COVID was very um, available. <laughs> Um, however, now I'm having to change certain products because I cannot get the bamboo that I require, um, which creates all sorts of different issues because you have to change your website, you have to change your products, you have to change your pricing. Um, so I think that might come under that section. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's it. Great. Thank you. And I, do. I just, and just want to reassure you, Joe, and others who um, have the same sort of worry about jargon. Um, sometimes the words are here because it's useful to learn them during the process, but we do try and um, frankly uh, simplify, but not stupefy what we're doing here. Um, normally, if you can explain things simply, it's harder than explaining them using jargon. So, um, you know, keep pushing back at us if you feel like we're getting lost in jargon, Joe. Can I also say sorry, but just to jump in for Joe, I feel like I've got no idea what I'm doing either. You know, so honestly, I promise you, I am making this up and working this out as I'm going along. You are not on your own with regards to that. <laughs> that, that does make me feel a bit more comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome we all that. are. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. OK, so let's think about social cultural. This, these are the ones that I find the most fun, you know. Gender and racial inequality, uh, the rise in local philanthropy, travel patterns. So people are, are working from home more. So they're going into their town centers, their high streets. So have a think about how those changes are impacting your business. And this is all quite free association. We just wanna get this out up to the surface. It's a lot of stuff that you already know. Joe, you very clearly articulated your challenges. So you know, exactly what's happening we just want to get it out on paper so that you can see it so we can find some of that gold uh that's in there when it comes to the opportunities and then let's have a think about technology 
So we've got increased adoption of AI. Uh, the fact that the barrier to entry to start a business is a lot lower. So is to service a business. So for a lot of us, that's put us at an advantage. I was thinking about the cost at the first company that I, um, I worked for, a startup. They used to make me walk and deliver by hand all the press kits. And then when I thought about it for a minute, how much of postage it would have cost them as a little startup to send out all these weighted packs to the magazines. It's no wonder they had me walking around. Whereas now you could use a free HubSpot CRM system and blast out a thousand press releases with one intern on London living wage. You know, that's a huge change in the way that we can all think about what we can pursue and to do. Technology's made it easy for us to play bigger. Yeah. Um, Leanna, think, think, thinking of this, I was thinking of our area of business is very much like skill development and the, you have politics and economics and social is all linked together. The mm -hmm. skill, you need all the skill that to for the economics to drive it, and the government have to to have the have the policy for encourage the development skill which they have to doing, and the social is very much like say a digital skill for those who have no skill, and also the social impact of the spectrum of people make pandemic make the fifty and then the the lower end of it. So I can see it would all relate to a skill in my case. So how do I then have to move this forward to these people in need? And that is by my vision. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, I hope. Yes, I think when we get into the next activity, it will actually be quite easy for you because then what we're going to do is to take all of these things that we see, these pushes and these pulls, and then we're going to think about what we do, what we are uniquely placed to do, why we are uniquely placed to do it, and then what opportunities we then see from there. And they will be ranked, and then what will happen is you will then see what you should focus on first. So you are ahead of the game there, May. Fabulous. And you will find common threads between all of these things. And so don't worry if you don't need to have really long lists. If it's if there's some key headline things like skills, changes in you know uh, access to facility treatment, uh, uh, mental health crises among students, all of these things, you will have some key headers. It's so that's that's fine too. You don't need to get into the minutia of it if that's not necessary for you. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at legal, so changes in legislation, uh, business risks. Again, this may be incredibly relevant for your business or maybe not at all. Again, focus on the stuff that makes sense for you. Take what you need, apply what makes sense. Liana, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, are we, are they, so these examples here, are these examples? And then we might have some other ones to add because I'm, I'm actually struggling. I don't know if we're going too fast, but I haven't got hardly any written down I mm -hmm. kind of feel like this needs to be done brainstorm wise like rather than individually because I think it's really difficult <laughs> this bit um so yeah can you just explain are we supposed to are those ones there which are really helpful um are they just, just examples they're, yeah they're just examples just triggers so again like think through Emma you know for the environmental side the lower the lower interest in uh, fast fashion, that's huge for you. So you can yeah. see that your market is growing big time. Yeah, no, um, I can see the ones that are relevant, but then I think the one like legal and, you know, there's, there's all these yeah, other so ones. Not, yeah, so don't, if it's not, if it's not relevant. Right, don't, don't worry about it. Don't, yeah, don't, you don't need to fill in every single thing. Okay, for fine. some person, for so for one person, legal might be a thing. So Kat might be thinking about any changes in legislation when it comes to surrogacy or things like that, but that's not going to be super relevant uh, for you. Okay, get it. Thanks. And and, and do talk out loud. <laughs> yeah, it's much better. <laughs> and, and, and remember that what a pastel analysis does, because it's, it, it really just teaches you as an entrepreneur to keep scanning the horizon for trends that could ultimately 
be winds of change on which your business growth could ride or not. So these are, these are just trends or events in terms of legal that on which you can build So it never matters if you can't fill in each box. Okay. What's important okay. is that you start to, that becomes almost a subconscious skill as an entrepreneur, is that you never lose sight of what the outside world is doing and what is occurring that could impact on your business. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um Neil Street, do you want to add a perspective when it comes to how we're looking at this and shaping it? Some yes. advice to give? No, well, I will share. I mean, just to add to that, I suppose, like you said, it's an environmental analysis. So we all, if you use the word bubble, an organization or, or the enterprise that all of you shared, if you were to think like a, a boat in the ocean, there are forces will affect how that boat journeys, you know, the way across. So in the same way, if you like these, some of these might affect your enterprise more than others. So these are factors, political factors, environmental factors. So if you can please think like that, it helps you understand how is my boat moving? Can I go this way? Is the wind blowing that way? So it helps you to navigate your business and pestle analysis. And again, just please don't be too overwhelmed by it, please. Maybe we'll have time to discuss this later. So this is just giving an overview to everybody who's listening to that. No, we are not expecting all you to be brilliant in strategic analysis, et cetera, et cetera. You know, these are just, we all had to learn. So just to share, it is, this is a tool that affects our enterprise. And as you just beautifully said, one or two businesses will be affected by one or two more factors than others. And again, a nice word that Pam used is to keep you to scan the environment, just scan it. And I think if you can get those sort of metaphors, that'll help you. These are tools. That's, that's what I would ask them to do. The other acronym that you will come across, you already probably know, the SWOT analysis. So everybody will say, I know that, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But this will also help you to get to, hmm, how strong am I? Oh, is that a weak chink here, et cetera. So I would always say to people, keep PESTO and SWOT always as a tool, day-to-day -to -day living. In fact, you can use SWOT for yourself. Anyway, that's another story. So I hope that adds to what you're already saying and what Pam is saying. I hope it does. Yes, I think that's a lovely analogy, Sri, the, 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 the boat in the ocean, um, because it will also ultimately help you as entrepreneurs to evaluate if something isn't working, um, but when we are young entrepreneurs or early entrepreneurs, we tend to think it's our fault. We've, we've done something wrong. Yeah. So taking into account what, uh, what the waves <laughs> that, are, that are altering your, your, your boat's journey uh, may consist of will help you um, not to pivot or turn away from an opportunity too no. quickly on the assumption that it was all down to your own judgment. Yes. Yes, yeah. Neil, do you want to add anything to that? Because what we'll do is we'll put you yeah, into okay. breakout groups and you can uh, work through this in a little bit more detail to just keep yeah. sketching it out. Okay, so I think my observation would be is <coughs> the challenge is to blend optimism and realism. So optimism to, you know, there's so many opportunities as powers, <laughs> particularly with, you know, digitals unlocking all sorts but also being somewhat brutally realistic um, about you know, how things can impact your business that are out of your control. So one of the things that so my consulting business was all based on, we'd all work for 20 years in retail, but it was all in pre-digital era. So all our consulting work was based on this experience and now suddenly everything in retail is digital. And that's been a real you know, sort of 
threat to us in terms of how we need to evolve our business proposition because what we used to sell very successfully suddenly isn't quite as attractive. So um, it's, you know, and it's a challenge because you, <laughs> you've got to say, you've got to push yourself and really be brutally honest um, with some of these things. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is think through these, and I'm going to actually open up the breakout rooms, and we're going to take Emma's suggestions, so you guys can dive in deeper on these points, and then we'll bring us back together, and we'll show you your homework that you can do in preparation for the next session. So let me pop everyone in the groups. Uh, ba, ba, ba. And the rooms will start to open. And what I want you each to do is just to go through and ask each other what's happening in your market and write down as free association. This is what's happening in my market. This is what's happening politically. This is what's happening economically. These are the opportunities that I'm seeing. This will also be a really nice opportunity for you all to get to know each other and your businesses a little bit better in the small groups. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're gonna spend about half an hour to 35 minutes working in very, very small groups. I want you to take a look at this. A market opportunity is any application of your abilities for a specific set of customers. So what I would like you to do as a reflective exercise between now and when we meet together again on Thursday is to take five, 10 minutes and just write down why you are uniquely positioned to do what it is that you do. So I want you to think about some of these opportunities that have come to the fore today, which again, like, don't try and do this right now. Let all of this stuff kind of just mm -hmm. land. And then take some time, maybe later tonight or tomorrow, think about what you've discovered and just write down why you're uniquely positioned to take advantage of these opportunities.